Hey, good morning. Good morning. Yep, and it is a good morning. I am a blessed man, but then so are you. We're talking about corresponding actions with the Word of God. You see, there was those tribes that had not gone in to possess, which God had already given them. Now, in the book of Joshua, chapter uh, 6, the children of Israel had just crossed the Red Sea. Tremendous miracle of God. They're walking in the power of God, but they come up against an obstacle. The walls of Jericho, it says here in chapter 6, verse 1, Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel so that none went in and none went out. So they're against this big, huge obstacle. They can't do it in the natural. It's a, a natural barrier that has kept them from doing anything. But God told them, watch this, he said, um, <clears throat> the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho. Now watch. See, God calleth things that be not as though they were, and so do you and I. He said, see, I have, see, notice, look, I have given. Now, there's a wall around there. Nobody's going out. Nobody's going in. And so God said, see, I have given it to you. God said that he sent his word and healed you, and with his stripes ye were healed. And if you were healed, that means you are healed right now. But you might say, yeah, but I don't feel healed. I don't look healed. Hey, that city of Jericho looked like it was an impossible situation. That would be like the doctors are giving you a report that you can't get over. All right. But you see, God told them to do some things. He said, go around the city six times, don't say anything. But on the seventh time, when you hear the trumpet sh sound, shout with a great shout, because I have already given you the city. Now, let me, let me go over here and read that uh, because I want you to see this. So Joshua had told them exactly how to do it. And it came to pass on the seventh day, I'm reading out of verse 15 here of Joshua chapter six, that when they went out in the morning, they could pass the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priest blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, shout for the Lord hath given you the city. Now watch, they didn't have it. But you know, when they did their part, God did their, his part. Let me say that again. When you do your part of believing the word of God, like I told you about my three little boys praying for me and said, I believe daddy's healed. So get up, daddy. And I had to get up to go to work. And as I got up is when healing came. You see, you do your part and then God will do his part, but God's not necessarily going to do his part for you do yours. In the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20, says, believe the prophets and so shall you prosper. In other words, believe the word of God. Your prosperity is tied to what you believe and what you believe is what you're going to say and what you're going to say is what you're going to have and then your sayings are going to cause you to go out and do something. Um, I believe I have an abundance and I'm like, well, because of that, then I'm constantly sowing seed into other people's lives. I'm sowing this seed into your life. But I mean, I'm constantly looking for places that I can sow gifts of money to because I believe that I have an abundance. And I've got some people that I support, ministries that I support, local church, that kind of thing. But I now do that not because I have it in my pocket. In fact, there's been a lot of days that I sent the last few dollars I had uh, to two or three different ministries. Didn't make any effect on them. I mean, you know, you send somebody else $3, $5, it may not affect them, but it tremendously affects how the power of God's released in your behalf. So they had to shout with a great shout because God had already given them the city. So you got to have some corresponding actions with what you believe. I mean, you know, you believe that you're fine. Well, get up in the morning and go in and go to work. Or you believe that you're fine. Get up and cook the breakfast or clean house or whatever. I mean, there's so many testimonies that I have about that that I could share with you. But testimonies is not how faith comes. You got to receive the word of God. After you receive the word of God, then you have to believe the word of God. Then after you believe the word of God, you got to say what the word says, and then you got to act on it. You know, find something to do. You know, find something to do that says I'm acting on the word of God. Just the other day, uh, uh, I fixed uh, some black-eyed peas and some cornbread. 
uh, and some collard greens. Woo! Southern cooking. I mean, boy, we having us a time. But you know, I said to Pat, I said, we got too much of this stuff. So I know somebody that's not able to get out much and they don't cook for themselves. So I got some of that stuff together. I mean, I could have put it in the freezer and kept it and ate it for a while, but I made a big dinner. Actually, I made two dinners. One from two or three days ago where I had some fish left over and some hush puppies. And I drove across town. I took it to them. And I said, here, I want to bless you with this because I believe that I have an abundance. And so I'm constantly looking for places and ways to sow seeds. Somebody said, I wouldn't sow no black eyed peas and collard greens. No, but I'm believing for them a hundredfold in money to buy whatever I want. Listen, that's the way you do this stuff. You believe, you receive, you say it, and then you act on it to the best of your ability. And then that's when the power of God comes to play after you've done your part. Hey, God will do his part and you'll be blessed in everything that you do. So do your part, God will do his part. I'm doing mine. And so until I'm with you tomorrow, saints, remember all day, hey, Jesus is Lord. Thank God the word works.